Hi, my name is Joel from the Fictional Fates Test Kitchen, and today we're going to be making... Hi, my name is... Annyeong chinguldu, ne irumun jolimida, and welcome back to my booktube channel. And this week, we are going to be participating in a readathon, which I am super excited about because this is the very first readathon that we're doing on this channel, and I am just super excited for it. So, the readathon in question, if you haven't guessed by the video title or the introduction, is Koreadathon, hosted by Monica Kim and Books with Chloe, in which we celebrate books written by Korean authors and just celebrate everything that the Korean culture has to offer. So a little bit of background, I watched Korean dramas and have listened to K-pop since around about 2013, 2014 um, when I was first introduced to it and ever since then I've literally just fell in love with it and it's amazing and the storylines are riveting and K-pop has honestly changed my entire like life from like the fashion to the aesthetic to um, just how great the songs are and I like K-pop is a whole separate other video I can do which I probably will do um but for now I am really excited to be sharing um some Korean books with you. Monica and Chloe have put together a few prompts for everyone um to do during Koreadathon and Koreadathon actually started yesterday um today is now Tuesday. I'm gonna get into my picks for this Koreadathon and then we can go ahead and get started. So the first um book for Koreadathon was the uh, group book that everyone would have to read and that is The Silence of Bones by Jun He. I already was going to read this this month anyway which was partially what convinced me to start Koreadathon because I was like it gives me an excuse to read Signs of Bones as well and I've talked about this on my channel quite a bit in like the last two my last two videos. The Silence of Bones is a historical Korean fiction um, detective story and I am just super excited to be getting into this. I just think it's going to be really awesome and um, from a lot of historical Korean dramas I've watched like Arang and the Magistrate, The Secret of the Witch and The Moon Embracing the Sun. Oh my god The Moon Embracing the Sun. I just think it's going to be really exciting to get into this and just read a historical Korean drama in literature. The next prompt was to pick a book translated from the Korean language and I chose Kim Ji Young Born 1982 by Cho Nam Ju and by the cover I was like really intrigued because I saw a, a yellow version but in Waterstones um, when I went there today there was a blue version of the cover and I was just I was like yes give it to me give it to me give it to me but this one tackles a lot of um, institutionalized sexism and it shows a lot of the oppression that women face within uh, the Korean culture and I'm really excited to be getting into this it is quite a short read I think it's like only a hundred and like 70 pages like 160 70 pages so I think I'll get through this fairly quickly and I'm just really excited to be getting into it. The next prompt was to read a book with a Korean uh, character or Korean face on the cover and with that I chose Wicked Fox by Kat Cho. This was almost my mythology pick however I have another book for the mythology pick that I'm really excited about so I thought Wicked Fox fit perfectly because this is about a Gumiho which is a nine-tailed fox in Korean mythology and it's it gives me um my girlfriend is a Gumiho vibes purely based off of the uh synopsis and I'm just really excited to be getting into this one as well a lot of my friends have recommended this one to me because of how good the writing is and how good the plot is and it is quite a thick book so I'm thinking I might read this either last or second to last because then I can have more time with this book so the next prompt was to uh, read a book with a Korean diaspora character and I chose Pachinko by Min Jin Lee and this one Monica said that was one of her favourites and I've just seen a lot of people pick this book for their Koreadathon pick so I was very intrigued and once I read the synopsis and it showed a lot about the relationship between Korea and Japan I became very intrigued in this and I am excited to read this one as well. Like The Wicked Fox it is quite a thick book. I think this one is about 400-ish pages so again I think this is going to be one I read near the end of the readathon so that I can like get through the other books first. And last but certainly not least the last prompt said to read a book from Korean mythology and so I picked Dragon Pearl by Yoon Ha Lee part of the Rick Ryden Presents imprint and I'm just super excited to be getting into Dragon Pearl because it's going to be my first book that I'm going to be reading from the Rick Ryden Presents imprint and I am just like 
and especially from the synopsis as well I'm just super excited to be getting into it and just seeing what the story has for me and this book is quite a nice size as well so I definitely think I'll be able to get through it within a day I'm also better reading this with RC or Neku the book lock which I'm really excited about because we both have like quite similar reading tastes and so I think if we both enjoyed this book it'll be a really nice buddy reading experience because he's also doing Karedathon and yeah I just think it's going to be quite a nice time so yeah I am just super excited to be getting into this and there's also two in real life challenges as well. The first challenge is to make a Korean dish and so I'm opting to make kimchi. Uh, I'm just like really excited to like ferment something because Brad from Bon Appetit loves his fermentation and it's, it's a live series and I'm just super excited to be finally delving into some fermentation and like getting to make some kimchi. And then the other prompt is to watch a Korean drama or film and with the final prompt i know kim ji young is a film as well alongside watching the korean dramas that i need to watch this week which is it's okay to not be okay but yes this is like my very first like readathon reading vlog that i'm doing with you all so i'm really excited and i think it'll be really nice for all of us to like spend some more quality time together because you know there's a lot of us now and I think we I need to become a little bit more personal with you and just like a little more bit more like sit down chat vlogging style so yeah I hope you enjoy and yeah I am super excited and I cannot wait to interact with everyone else who's doing Creedathon um over on Twitter and I get to talk about Korean dramas because it's just oh it's gonna be great it's gonna be great so yes I think my plan for tonight um for like Tuesday night is to start Kim Ji Young, maybe finish Kim Ji Young, and also uh, catch up on It's Okay to Not Be Okay because I need to watch the two episodes that were put up on Saturday and Sunday. So I think my reading list for Creedathon is as follows. Kim Ji Young, then The Silence of Bones, then Dragon Pill, then Wicked Fox, and then I think I'll end everything off with Pachinko. And I also have a few in real life things to do this week, such as painting my room. I'm also ordering my laptop at some point this week, so I think it'll, this vlog will be part lifestyle, part readathon, which I think will be really cool. But yeah, I'm just super excited to start my first reading vlog. But yeah, let's get started. Okay, so today is Wednesday and I have yet to actually start any of the books that are on my reading list because I was going to, I was going to, but we reached 20,000 subscribers on this channel yesterday and I wanted to take the evening to celebrate that and um, yeah, I just, <laughs> it's really overwhelming to see the fact that there's so many of you, again, I don't even have that many videos out at the moment, but I just, oh god, I'm crying. It just means a lot, and I just wanted to say thank you all um, again. So this morning I woke up at around about like 10 a.m. Uh, I did sleep in for a bit because I did stay up until about 2 o'clock last night. I had a few errands to run this morning. I went to the supermarket where I got a few things for my kimchi that I'm going to be making later on. However, I wasn't able to get a few of the ingredients, but fortunately my sister is going to be driving me to Tesco's later on to grab the rest of them. So hopefully, fingers crossed, they have them. Otherwise, I'm not going to be able to make it. I also had to go pick up my antidepressants because I ran out a, a few days ago and I wasn't able to get a repeat prescription until now, but I have my antidepressants, so everything is fine. Also, also, I want to introduce you to someone. I am now the proud, well, I am now a plant dad. So this is my first baby. I don't know who they are yet. I don't know their name. Uh, this is also a temporary pot for them because I didn't have a pot to put them in for the moment except for this. But I'm going to be getting a pot for it soon so that I can repot it. Do you want to help me name my plant? Pop some suggestions in the comment section down below on what you think I should name this little palm plant. And yeah, we can 
we can name it together. I do want to get a lot more plants though because, oh my god, Aidan Thomas, who um, is the author of Cemetery Boys that's coming out in September, I believe, he owns so many plants. I'm eternally jealous of all the plants that he owns and so I aspire to be as big of a plant daddy as he is. So yeah, I'm gonna be owning a lot more plants. But my only worry is that when I go off to uni, my siblings nor my mum will not water my plants and they'll all die. So I'm gonna have to send them like reminders of when to water my plants. So for today's agenda, we have a few objectives. I want to uh, read and finish Kim Ji-young Born 1982 because it's only like 160 pages, which means I'll be able to get through that within like three hours, I guess. So it'll be quite a quick read. And then I also want to catch up on It's Okay to Not Be Okay because I've yet to watch episodes five and six, but I was talking to someone on Instagram yesterday and they said that I'm gonna really enjoy these next two episodes. So I am fully excited to see like what's gonna happen, but I'm hoping it's not gonna be emotional. Well, the entire drama so far has been really emotional, but I'm hoping it doesn't like make me sob because I don't wanna look like that. And it might mean I have to redo my skincare, so. Uh. But yeah, I'm also really liking the outfit that I have on today. Like, it's like this black t-shirt that says thinking of you. I wanna get more t-shirts that have like sayings on or like statements on. Like, I think that would be really cool to incorporate into my fashion repertoire. And I like these trousers as well, like with the gray checkered and stuff. Oh my gosh, I'm getting a bit more intimate on this channel. So I also wanted to say, um, a lot of the clothes that I wear are from fast fashion brands. And it is something that I am consciously aware of and something that I'm trying trying to actively change. However, there's also that discussion of being financially able to. And of course, for the moment, I am a student. And so basically fast fashion brands are the only way I'm able to sustainably add to my wardrobe. However, I also buy a lot of clothes secondhand from charity shops and Depop as well. So I am trying to actively improve um, the amount of fast fashion that I do buy and slowly try to migrate towards sustainable clothing. So yeah, I think I'm just gonna settle in now and start Kim Ji Young Born 1982. I am just really excited to see like, um, what the story contains. So yeah, this is, how many pages is this? Oh, it's 163 pages. And when I did reading sprints with the Unfriendly Black Hotties, I was able to read like 30 pages in 15 minutes, which means by my calculations, that's about 120 pages an hour, which then means I should be done with this book in about an hour and a half by my calculations anyway. So we'll see. And I am just super excited to be getting into this. So yeah, let's go. So it is currently 10 to 5 and I am about, I'm on page 6, why am I always on page 69 of things like, I'm about halfway through now, I'm really impressed by Cho Namju's writing, like the, her writing style is just really riveting and really easy to like get into and really easy to flow as well and I've been listening to the audiobook on Audible along with reading it and it's just been, it's just made it a more pleasant reading experience for me. The novel so far has um, covered Kim Ji Young's um, relationship with her husband and then her upbringing and already from like ha half of the novel you can really see a lot of the sexism and misogyny that takes place within the Korean society like her husband believes that Kim Ji Young's feminism is a form of mental illness and so decides that she needs to go to a therapist which <sighs> There's a whole stigma surrounding mental health in the Korean industry. It not being discussed has led to drastic consequences, such as we've seen with Korean pop idols. I think that it is something that needs to be more widely discussed. Um, this also talks about a lot of like the sibling relationships and how younger male siblings are often held up and revered more than the female siblings and how female siblings are often held to work in order to provide for their male count like male siblings as well. And I think it sets a lot of what women had to go through in South Korea in order to provide for their families and their expectations to be a housewife and to be 
a dutiful woman in a family setting. And I think especially with Kim Ji Young and his sister Kim Eun Young, both of them are probably more advanced women. They're probably women who want to fight for themselves. And we do see aspects in the novel of like other women coming to the defense of Kim Ji Young through certain situations and coming to the defense of other women throughout. But I think what overshadows these is also the effects that um, they're not able to speak about it fully because they live in such a patriarchal society. But we do see the evolution of Korean society grow when we see some of like the more historical aspects, when we see about the Ministry of Gender Equality being formed in 2001. And I think, I don't know what's going to happen in the rest of this book, but I'm really excited to see what goes on and I'm really excited to see how um, this ends. But it has been a bit difficult for Kim Ji-young so far. I'm gonna read the rest of this and we shall see what goes on. So I just got back from going out with my older sister to grab the last ingredients for the kimchi. However, we ended up going to three separate supermarkets because they didn't carry the Napa cabbage slash Chinese leaf that I needed for the kimchi. But our last supermarket, Morrison's, had it. So um, yeah, I've almost got everything for the kimchi. Hopefully tomorrow then we'll have our like cooking with Joel uh, thing so that we can make the kimchi and hopefully do a taste test on like Sunday. So it should be quite good. Um, but for now, the plan of action for tonight now is to finish Kim Ji Young Born 1982. Um, we've just got to the part where she's just finished university and is going into the world of work, so we're about to get into more of that institutionalised misogyny and institutionalised oppression. And then I also want to um, watch episodes 5 and 6 of It's Okay to Not Be Okay, so that I'm fully caught up on that series and I'm just super excited. Um, but yeah, I, I also just had dinner as well. My mum made me this amazing spaghetti and meatballs. Um, I'm vegetarian, so it was corn meatballs, but still, it just tasted really nice. And yes, um, my mum also wants me to help her move a bookshelf uh, downstairs into our living room, so I'm going to be doing that this evening. I, I don't know. It feels really weird recording this reading vlog because I've never done like a reading vlog like this before and it just feels weird like trying to figure out what to film and what not to film but I'm hoping you're all enjoying it so far so yeah let's just keep going. Hi, so it is quarter past one and I am falling behind. Um, I fell asleep during my Korean drama yesterday, so I rewatched uh, episode five of It's Okay to Not Be Okay. Still have episode six to watch, but I can watch that later on. Um, but I've got like an hour left on the audiobook of um, Kim Ji Young Born 1982, so with times two speed, I've got about half an hour left. So it should, should be going smoothly today. Today I have a few things also on the agenda. I have to order my MacBook because finally um, we have the back to school deal on there, which is amazing. Um, we also have the last parts of my kimchi um, items coming today. Um, so then we can finally make the kimchi tonight and taste test it on Sunday. So it should be very good. And I'm like very hype for like tr finally making kimchi and stuff. Also, this is my first time using the front facing camera on my phone, so. We, do we love it? I think I like it. I think I like it. And I also want to treat myself tonight to a um, bath with a bath bomb because I need to pamper myself and I have this royalty um, bath bomb and it's got a, it's like a crown and it looks amazing and I just think it'll look really nice as well and just relax in that. Um, behind me, as you can see, is the paint swatches that everyone um, was voting for on Twitter. Um, everyone voted for the bottom one. However, I am now going for this one. I'm sorry to everyone who wanted me to go for the bottom one, but I preferred the top one, so. I chose the wrong week to decide to like paint my room, considering the fact I'm doing this reading vlog and everything, but, but, I think it'll look great. I think it'll look nice. So yeah, oh, let's get through today. Oh, 
Hi, my name is Joel from the Fictional Fates Test Kitchen, and today we're going to be making booktuber kimchi. So I have never made kimchi before. I've never fermented anything before, but I saw that Joshua Weissman has a really good tutorial on YouTube on how to make kimchi. Um, and he says, you don't really understand kimchi until you've made it. So I thought for the Creedathon, why not make kimchi? I think it's gonna be really awesome. So I ordered this really nice looking jar to store my kimchi in. Um, I just think it looks really beautiful and lovely. But the main star is Napa cabbage, or as it's called in here, Chinese leaf, which... Okay. I'm going to be following Joshua Weissman's tutorial, and hopefully, hopefully, we'll be able to make at least something cool and, like, fun with it. So, yeah, if it tastes like kimchi, I'll be happy. If it doesn't, I'll still be happy because I've made something for this readathon. Also, a quick note as well, I just realised when I was holding these cabbages, um, I felt like the guy from Avatar The Last Airbender where he's like, MY CABBAGES! And yeah, I just, I don't know. His cabbages, wow. Impactful. Amazing. Say hi. Say hi, bitches. Mm -hmm. Well, I forgot about the fact that I need a food processor in order to make the kimchi paste. So my mum has kindly offered to run to the supermarket to get me a food processor whilst I basically finish up Kim Ji Young and I'm super thankful. I think the, so far though, the kimchi making has been really great. The video has been really easy to follow as well. I just love Joshua Weissman's channel so much. Like there are so many good food channels on YouTube, like um, Joshua Weissman. There was Bon Appetit, but Bon Appetit is currently <laughs> because of everything that's going on with Sola, Hanzi and all of them. Like I, I fully stand by it, Sola and Hanzi and like they're basically the ones that made me watch the channel in the first place. And I know Brad does have a kimchi video, but I was like, I'm, I'm not gonna give them uh, more views. Food is one of those things that I think is um, a whole encompassing and it's a way of showing love to people and a way of showing how much you care for people. But it's also a way of expression and creativity. And I think that food, especially when homemade, becomes so much more and you truly begin to appreciate the time and effort that people have taken in order to make these recipes and make these dishes that families sit down and enjoy. And I think especially with this readathon, like specifically with Korean culture as well, there's a whole new appreciation that I have for all of these families that would take time to make kimchi together. And like, I see it a lot in Korean dramas as well where um, the mothers or the grandmothers mostly, sometimes the fathers too would like bring um, kimchi side dishes to their younger children or to their relatives. And although they do moan and bicker, I think it is a way of showing a love I think it's a way of communicating that love towards their relatives and saying like, I love you and I made this, I put my blood, sweat and tears into this for you. And I think it's just so beautiful. And yeah, food is amazing. We love food, we stand food in this household. But yeah, I'm gonna be waiting for that food processor. I'm gonna finish Kim Ji Young and then I will probably get back to you once I finish it. So yeah. So I just finished Kim Ji Young Born 1982 by Cho Nam Ju and honestly the way she talks unfiltered and powerfully about the misogyny that women face in Korean society and 
I loved the writing style in this book as well like the way that um, it was told as a sort of biography but also it had moments of um, emotion and moments where you just wanted to claw the men to pieces um but yeah I just think that it was beautifully um depicted and although we didn't know who the narrator was until like the very end um it really shows as well when we find out who the narrator is how the misogynistic tendencies still leak and still per like perpetuate in Korean society because although he is sympathetic to Kim Ji Young they eventually their attitude eventually turns to a more misogynistic one and so we see that this attitude still isn't carrying on and I think there was a very powerful point raised in the story where I think it was Kim Ji Young mentioned that although the law has changed people's attitudes haven't changed like we see this a lot in um, society where although laws have been passed to make things more equal and more um, prevalent for everyone that doesn't change the social dynamic, that doesn't change um, things like the Civil Rights Act, that hasn't stopped racism, um, marriage equality, that hasn't stopped homophobia, because yes, the laws have changed, but socially, nothing has changed. This story is one that I would recommend to everyone. This is a solid five stars for me, and yeah, I really enjoyed it, I really enjoyed it. So an update on the kimchi, I was made halfway through making it and then I realised that I had forgotten to order Korean red pepper flakes and well, <laughs> I had to improvise and so fortunately yesterday my sister had gotten me like this red, coarse red pepper and black pepper thing, so I had to use that instead and well, it's not kimchi anymore but it's still gonna be fermented cabbage so I think it's it's a, it's a it's a half success. It's a half success. So what I'm going to be doing now is I need to cleanse my shelf of every single book on there because I need to move it out of my room because we are painting tomorrow. And then tonight I'll also be starting the Silence of Bones and Dragon Pill because Silence of Bones I'm just super hyped for and super excited for. And I know that June Ho has a new book coming out soon, I think in 2021, but the cover is super gorgeous. Danny from The Book Order. Um, Danny and I were talking about this, um, I think yesterday or the day before, about how beautiful the cover was, and I'm just, mm, I'm super excited to get into this. And then Dragon Pill by Yoon Ha Lee, because RC has already started and I am falling behind on the buddy read, so yeah, you know, I need to get in there. I also have a few emails to respond to tonight because I had some very exciting um, things in today and I'm just super excited for like the future content that's coming to this channel, so hopefully you'll all like it too. Also, can I quickly mention, actually, Irene and Solgi's comeback. Irene and Solgi's comeback. Like, Monster is just such a good song. The entire mini album, like, no skips. There are no skips whatsoever. And I'm just... <sighs> My lesbian queens are thriving. And I am super happy about that. But yeah, I guess that's it for this update. And so let's continue on. <laughs>
Hey Siri. Good afternoon friends. The time is currently at almost 10 to 4 and basically I've spent the entire day um, setting up my new MacBook Pro and just going through and learning the new ecosystem and just getting used to like the controls because I used to be on a Windows laptop so moving to a Mac just feels very strange to me. I think I'm going to do a little bit more work now and then afterwards I'm going to read a bit more of Dragon Pill because RC has like gone way ahead of me in our buddy read so I need to catch up and then I think this evening I'm going to be reading The Silence of Bones because I also need to finish that book because yesterday I thought it was the last day of Caridathon and I don't know why I thought it was the last day of Caridathon because I knew it was until the 12th and it was literally the 10th so I now know that I have two extra days but I also wanted to take the time to thank everyone for their support um, for helping me get this MacBook and honestly I wouldn't have been able to do it without you so thank you to every single person that donated through my coffee link and I just appreciate all of you and now that I have this my productivity system um, is gonna be much better like I am a huge fan of productivity and organization I know Fladwer from Word Wonders is the exact same like she and I talk so much about Excel spreadsheets and the how we keep ourselves organized and it's amazing like the developmental systems that you can come up with in order to keep yourself on task and especially as someone with me who has ADHD it helps me realize a lot of the things that I need to do and having constant reminders of things that I need to do as well. I have not named the MacBook yet but um, I, I'm taking some suggestions on Twitter, but if you wanted to name my MacBook as well, um, if you want to come up with like a name from a fandom, so my phone is called the Adventure Zone and my iPad obviously is called the Inquisition, so if you had any name suggestions whatsoever, pop them in the comment section down below and I will search through them and pick a few of my favourites and then maybe we can set up a poll on our community page, I think that would be really fun. Let's get going. Good afternoon friends, it is currently the last day of Caridathon, which is Sunday the 12th, and it is one o'clock in the afternoon. This morning I basically just woke up and went straight to sprinting with the unfriendly black hotties because they were doing some reading sprints and I really needed to get through some of the dragon pill and I am now on chapter 30 and I'm just amazed by this book so much, like the seamless integration of sci-fi and fantasy, like it's so beautiful and I just love Min and um, what they go through throughout the entire book and really the magic system of fox magic like it's so intricate yet it leaves a lot to the imagination as well because obviously this is a middle grade it can't be an overly complicated magic system but I think it just serves really well in this book and the world building is just phenomenal and I I just adore it I adore this so much and I just love 
um, how easily Yoon Halley was able to integrate a non-binary character as well. Just the simple mention of the gender neutral, because basically one of the characters has a name badge and it says to address them as gender neutral. Like that is just sim really simple. And I think more authors need to realize that just something as simple as that is all that we really need. I am really excited to see how this ends. And then I think I'll delve into the science of bones and hopefully finish that today as well. Oh, also, um, I watched episode six of It's Okay to Not Be Okay last night and I cried, I cried. And if Korean dramas make you cry, then you know you've made it. Like you literally know that it's a good drama. I'm gonna finish Dragon Pill. I am gonna get into the Slants of Bones and we'll check in in a bit. So yesterday I managed to finish Dragon Pill by Yoon Ha Lee and The Silence of Bones by Jun Hae and both books blew me away. Like, I am just such a massive fan of fantasy and historical fiction, and these books did not disappoint. Like, Yoon Halley's Dragon Pill was just phenomenal in terms of the writing and the plot, and the characters were just so well developed, and I ended up really liking this book. The ending was just such an emotional one. I actually cried after finishing this because I, I just, it was just so amazing and oh god I'm gonna cry again um and just the family feel of it, everyone like coming back together and it was just really because I could imagine exactly what happened after the ending and I did end up giving this four stars because whilst I did really love this book I I don't know I feel like it didn't it's not like up there in like my favorite books ever and I feel like it's definitely but it's definitely one that I would reread and recommend to everyone because this is amazing <laughs> and then we have The Silence of Bones by June here this book surprised me in so many ways like the character development and the plot and the way it twisted and turned in this mystery and I was truly feeling like I was witnessing a Korean drama whilst reading this book and again this was just another one that really hit me really hard and I I just oh June his writing style as well it's just phenomenally amazing and I loved the way that June would describe things and just taste tasteful writing and I would definitely recommend this to everyone. I am just, I really want to read June his um, Forest of Stolen Girls now. <sighs> who, 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 which devil do I need to sell my soul to to get all of these like manuscripts or advanced readers copies? I end up giving this one five stars because I definitely see this one being one of my favorites. I loved every second of it, like iconic iconically beautiful and I just love the cover art as well like it's so so I yeah I am really happy to have finished this and again would definitely recommend to everyone so overall in Creedathon I managed to finish three books Kim Ji Young Born 1982, Dragon Pill and The Silence of Bones However, I did um, not manage to read two books, which were Wicked Fox and Pachinko. I definitely do want to read those two books at some point because they did interest me. But this readathon definitely has a big message to it, which is to support Korean authors and even wider than that, support Asian authors and support their stories. I can definitely see this readathon becoming a yearly thing, hopefully, hopefully. My first readathon on this channel like it's definitely an experience. I think I've learned a lot through the aspect of like recording my progress and trying to record this weekly vlog kind of thing and if you did have any suggestions on how I can improve like these style of vlogs definitely leave them down in the comment section down below because I am fully interested in learning how to grow and learning how to make my vlogs even better for you all. The Fermented Cabbage I, mm, hmm, it's not kimchi, it's fermented cabbage because it doesn't look like kimchi. I don't think it smells like kimchi. 
and I don't think it'll taste like kimchi. So I'm gonna leave off the testing for like the taste test for now and none like no one deserves to see what it looks like. So I'm going to wait until I have my redemption arc when I go to read Shine by Jessica Jung. And in that video, we'll remake this, we'll do the whole kimchi thing again and we'll actually get it right this time. I apologize for not wanting to like to taste test it, but I kind of want to taste test it when I have it done right. So, I mean, if you all want me to taste test it, just tag me on Twitter and maybe I'll make a little Twitter video of it, but I just don't think you'll deserve to see that on this channel. Sorry. So yeah, I'm excited to be doing more readathons in the future, and I think, um, I don't know when my next one will be. I might participate in the reading rush, who knows, who knows? But yeah, I think that there's a lot to be taken from this, um, and which is that we need to be supporting Asian authors, especially South Korean authors, much more widely, and yeah. But yeah, that was my Koreadathon vlog. I hope you really enjoyed it, and yeah, if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, and you can do so down below. If you're not subscribed yet, consider clicking that subscribe button so that you know when I upload next. Uh, this week's shout out of fates goes out to Monica Kim and Books with Chloe, the organizers of this readathon, who were phenomenally, uh, phenomenally? amazing in creating such an iconic challenge for us all to do. I mean, also, we changed walls during this readathon, like, wow, that's amazing. But yeah, I guess until the next video. Bye, friends.